we have the both came, both came. Uh, and I went to vote with the same members last week because it's a vote on both came, both came. And he went prepared to move with council engage Hamisham Clydesdales for the uh, discipline and care of council public and horses. Councillor Charles, do you have anything to uh, that uh, I'd like to know more, if I may, before I do anything like that. Uh, may, may I ask, may I ask uh, a, a question beforehand, or hang on, yes, I'm, yes. Out, I'm out of, yes, of field. Ask a question if I Okay. Um, for the benefit of the horses, uh, I think it's a wonderful idea that they're registered somewhere where we can hold people responsible, but I'm, I'm just not certain what this is going to cost, because it hasn't, uh, um, hasn't come to the Horse Tram Committee I'm just wondering, I, know, I can read, you know, uh, what, what's here, but it's, is it going to be something that's going to get out of control, like when we voted for the, the um, transfer of the horses, the, the um, floating of the horses, we didn't know it was going to cost $300 a day when we voted, let's float the horses. It just was advised to us well and truly after that, but we saw the need and we did what we had to do. And uh, it concerns me that the committee's not yet together, and here we are with a recommendation on something that the committee should be looking at. Thank you. Uh, we still need a mover. What was the question? Sorry? Well, the question was, uh, how much is it going to cost us? And, and I guess that that's, that's essential. If it's, if it's not too dear, I pity the horses, and I'd prefer to see the horses be taken from where they currently are and cared for by professionals as these people obviously are, but I need to know before I can vote on this, and I would rather have it go through the committee, that's a statement now, rather than this meeting here tonight. Thank you. Uh, you have to give us a, a cost of uh, this proposal? Or I don't you wish, but I think the costs are in the report. Mm -hmm. uh, the money is in the report, and uh, um, uh, the only reason we are recommending this as an option at this stage is because uh, our estimates uh, would indicate that it is uh, cost neutral to what we're currently doing. Uh, over a 12 month period, if it, if it went for that long, it would be an extra cost saving. Um, but in the meantime, uh, the important thing is to, to get some, some horses back in training uh, because we have to think about succession planning for our, our horse stock. Um, just in relation to the other matter you talked about, I, I believe that the costs of the floating were presented to council before the contract was entered into. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Chibin, do you have to move it right now? Yeah, I'm happy to make the uh, recommendation. At least we are making a step forward in some direction and we use for a six months to a, a, a review of the arrangement to occur after six months of the implementation. So I believe it's at least we're making a move. Thank you, Councillor Jenkins. Do you have to take that? Any discussion? Oh, Councillor Marshall first. Yeah, well, this is one I actually will support, although I'm worried about the cost, but uh, Cambridge and Clydesdale is probably one of the most reputable the horse uh, Clydesdale groups in Australia, and, and how the most the, uh, the owner or manager. I the manager, chairman, whatever, was on the original horse trim committee. Uh, seems like a very nice guy and I think he treats his horses very well. If you um, have a look on uh, on the internet, you'll see some of his horses on parade at horse shows and things like that. And they're extremely good looking horses, well groomed, um, and they all seem to enjoy themselves. So I support this. Thank you. Councillor Scarfield, do you uh, have a comment? Uh, yes, I guess my only comment, but I'm, I'm sorry, um, Your Worship, I only picked this up today um, because I have been, been away. Um, one of the, the questions I, I guess I had is the, the sale of the horses that are unsuitable for training, um, and there's two named here. How long are they going to actually be um, in these facilities at 100 <coughs> per week plus, and I've tried to do some figures today, 
Um, how long will they be in, in this, this facility for $100 um, a week? And at what time are we going to put the, the horses that are, are not suitable for training? Are we giving a, an indication of how long that they are to be held? And if after that particular time, if they are not being sold, and this is going to come as a, a shock to some people, but if you own horses, well, you've got to look at these uh, animals, you've got to look at these things. So, how long are we going to leave them there? And at what time do we decide if they can't be sold or held on, what the option is? Because we can't continue to pay all of this money for eternity. So there has to be some really hard decisions made. They're not good decisions or not easy decisions to make when you own animals. But um, I think there's a couple of things why I, I think, it, yes, it's good, it's a start. I think the way it's set out could have been set out perhaps a little bit differently. Um, that gives us a slightly clearer indication of where we're going. But I think there needs to be a couple of time frames uh, put on this. With your permission, could we break from meeting uh, procedure and, and discuss this very important matter? She's asking a question, she deserves a chance to be answered. Thank you. And uh, Grover, you have a comment on this? Yeah, pretty well. She's a uh, very good question. I, I, I would think that in the first instance we're having, um, and, and there are two horses identified for um, um, shifting out of the stock, um, and they have been named previously by other staff that have, um, and, and people involved that have felt that they wouldn't be suitable for service. Our first um, exercise in all of this is to have the um, the expert trainer come and have a look and assess those horses to, to make sure that that's the case. Um, I guess we would be um, guided by, by that advice uh, and also uh, any advice on, on the best way to, to move those horses on. Uh, for sale, so I would expect that we do that once we know, establish which horses aren't suitable, uh, that we do that as soon as possible. Um, if sales weren't to eventuate and we had to look at other um, alternatives, um, certainly that was something, that's probably something that I'd have to bring back to either um, the committee if it exists by then or, uh, or potentially back to council. Um, but I'm certainly not going to make a call on what we do with the horses. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next one in line was Councillor Glasgow. Uh, unless you have a question on that particular matter, Councillor Glasgow? Well, it's a particularly important matter, and I would like to see the, the leader of the council to speak again, please, on that. Uh, I'm guided by the, by the uh, council. Uh, if you like, I can throw it open to uh, normal uh, or release the council uh, protocol and just open discussion. And uh, if that's what the will of the council wants. In which case we'll do that. But I'll just go back to Councillor Bradford because he's had his hand up waiting. So uh, not doing uh, any protocol, but I'm trying to keep it in some semblance of order. Okay, he's just suspended many of the leaders. Okay, well, I won't be supporting the recommendation. Um, although I agree with this proposal in principle, and should the express expression of interests for external operation of the horse train be unsuccessful, I would certainly be in favour of this model. But I believe that before we commit to spending almost $35,000 on horse training, we need to fully explore the outsourcing opportunities. I understand that there's a shortage of, horse, of trained horses, but if the operations are outsourced, the new operators may have the skills to train these horses in-house which would represent a great saving for our community. That's all I want to say, thanks. Thank you, uh, yeah, Councillor Marshall, you're next, then Councillor Charles. Uh, yeah, look, I'll try and be quiet about this, but I, I find Councillor Schofield's suggestion as deplorable. Um, the outrage in this community would be, would, couldn't, be couldn't be estimated. Uh, putting possibility of putting down two perfectly healthy, healthy horses is just so unpalatable to me and to any other animal lover uh, just for convenience sake and I think that's that has got to be an option we don't even consider. Um, we know already 
uh, if people have any background in this particular issue, but a number of our older horses have been retired and there have been people lining up to take them just to let them stand in paddocks and spend the rest of their lives chewing grass in the sun. If you've got young, healthy horses that, that are capable of working, uh, I, I, it just happens that I know a bloke already uh, up in the mid-north past Gawler who would be who, who was actually making inquiries about buying a, a, a Clyde Star uh, just as a, as a pet horse and he's got lots of other horses. So I don't think we'd have any trouble at all moving them on, but I would hate to think that anyone's even contemplating um, euthanizing two healthy animals. I really do, and I think we've got to put that out of the, out of the picture altogether. Thank you, yeah, Councillor Charles. Um, um, does um, Councillor Schofield want to reply to that first while it's fresh in your mind? Thank you, Councillor Charles. Uh, yes, I think. Um, I'm speaking on my background as a dairy farmer. Um, I'm also considering when I, when I look at this, the position that council is in and the fact that we are looking at reducing our costs. I believe I'm being realistic and all I'm asking is, I guess there's three steps. One, we send our horses away and having a look at this, um, I actually worked out that each of the horses are costing us $2,727.28 per year to just feed. So, I mean, that's a reasonable amount of money. I think our feed bill this year is going to be about $129,000. So, if you're having a look at those sorts of figures, where we're sitting and where, what the community are criticising us for, for spending money, we have to be realistic. And one is, horses go away, they're assessed. We try and sell them if they're not sold. We try and give them away. How long do we continue to keep them, Councillor Marshall, at that cost? And I'm not saying that we send the horses away and we look at disposing them. I'm just saying what is the procedure and what is the time limit? Are we, you know, have we got an indefinite time? Or do we, you know, we may be lucky that somebody will walk in the door tomorrow and take them and yeah. put them in a good paddock. Perhaps, I know we've suspended yeah. the procedures, but we probably need to keep to what we're talking about, uh, the training of the horses. Um, Councillor Charles, yeah? Um, I said we should suspend meeting procedure earlier on before we did, and I'm glad we have, but this is not something that we can decide. If you had a horse tram committee right now, you could spend an entire night discussing this, and that's what this subject deserves. We can't do it here, we can't do it now, we've got the cart before the horse, I'm not voting for what's been put up at this stage. I want to have it come from you people after you've decided with your sparse committee. I know that some people have applied for the committee who are not part of the, uh, the paid group or sitting group. Um, start with them and come back to us with some recommendations, please. Uh, yes, Councillor Jenkins. Um, I'll just be brief. Um, I think that the taking too much time that the um, that you know advertising committee members are taking too long that nothing's happening um, the community wanting things to happen we've got a we've got a um, a motion up there for things to start happening and we can start doing things before the committee's form and form the committee can take over from where we left off so I think that's important um, I think these horses are not just farm horses these belong to the community and are the community pets and the community icons. And so any decision that we make around the horses, we have to remember that the community love the horses. Um, they will be able to go to good homes. Um, if, I mean, this is a rural area. There's lots of people living in rural areas around here. Um, they will be able to go to good homes and continue to be loved and cared for when they you know, are past their time of working on the tram, if they're unable to be trained for the tram. I don't think people need to get upset about horses being euthanized or anything like that because 
it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen on my watch. Um, and I'm sure it's not going to happen because they are loved pets by the community. But I think, given that they are loved pets by the community, and they're also working horses, we have to get on and start training them and start making sure that they are doing their job. Thank you. One last comment. You know, I'm sorry, please, Councillor Marshall. Um, yeah, look, I, I just say this with respect to Councillor Schaefer once again. This is the entire problem that we've had with the horse training. People are basing it all on finances, costs. Mm. Uh, it doesn't matter, as Councillor Jenkins said, the community love these horses. They're not something like a couple of extra decky old sheep you've got in your paddock where you can just knock them on the head and no one will care. Um, you've, you've got these, these icons, these beautiful, great animals. And uh, look, I'll, I'll buy the two damn things if they ever get stuck. So <coughs> keep them in my backyard in Burke Street. <laughs> Um, but um, no, no, honestly, I mean, you, we need to get over this thing when it comes to the horses of the fact that it's costing us money because that is that is where where this whole thing started. This is where this whole demise of the horse tram uh, began when people were wanting to economise on horse feed and things like that. I mean, just got to put that out of our minds. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think we've had enough discussion uh, outside of the meeting presenters. Uh, I think we'll come back on the meeting presenters and, and stick to the, the motion. Uh, I think we've had enough discussion on that motion. Unless there's any important question to clarify, uh, I'll put it to the vote. Uh, all those in favour? All those against?